So from the eyes of the startup development phases, this was the, the situation before the, the kind of the, we created the development uh, framework. Uh, this was the, the, the only picture available in Wikipedia, which is the, the, the top number page in Google. And uh, the problem here was that it was only about the finance side. So it was only about the valuation, only about the finance rounds. There was not a journey from the perspective of an entrepreneur. So basically, not only was the perspective of entrepreneur missing, but also there wasn't anything leading towards the first finance round. So in the common terminology, this is also the situation that uh, where, where we started and we felt that a lot of the knowledge is missing. So it was only about, you know, three simple steps. You have the idea, you launch it, and then you scale. But this was missing the point about the team building, how to do the team building in a balanced manner to avoid premature scaling. Uh, in context of building the innovation as well. Where's the ideation? So where does the ideas actually come from? Is there a systematic process to do to be applied to coming up with ideas versus everything in the startup world pretty much start from validating the idea. So everyone is expecting that the team already exists and that the idea already exists. This is where most of the the kind of the, the knowledge started from. So we were specifically curious and focused on where does the ideas come from? Can more be done on the ideation level? And where does the team come from? How can you build your co-founding team? And how do you build the commitment? And then uh, more of the validation part. And this part is of course very much uh, available and documented through the Lean Startup phase and Lean Startup methods, but at the same time, that's not the only one. And, uh, and most importantly, the Lean Startup doesn't cover too much, if anything, re related to ideation processes. So <clears throat> we put these three key different phases below the you know, behind the idea is the idea formation and the team formation. Behind the launch, or between the idea and launch, is the validation, and not only the product, but also the team validation. And then is the growth. So, how does the scaling happen? And basically, this is now a version 3.6 out of the startup development phases, and you can go to Startup Commons website and read the whole history of this document. See the very first person where it started from <clears throat> and how it's been iterated over the years. And really it's capturing this from idea to product to business and from talent to co-founding team to organization in a balanced manner and looking in the ways to how to manage the risk of the most common failure factor, premature scaling, and also how to balance the, the overall development uh, through these different uh, steps. So we have the three key steps, and then we pretty much have like the entry and exit point of each of these uh, development phases, and we have a very high-level description to kind of describe these sub-segments of how the company looks like at that specific phase. And this is not a plan, this is more of a roadmap and milestones. So regardless of how do you get to the next milestone, that's your plans and strategies in the company, but the milestones are giving you a kind of perspective of how does the company should look like when you can say, uh, having reached a certain milestone uh, with this roadmap. Here's also kind of statistical perspective into this is more from an ecosystem. If you look at how does the numbers look like um, in a, any given ecosystem and the ecosystem sizes can of course uh, change. But if we start from ideation, it's like what kind of volume of ideation. This is from a um, 
snapshot of, of uh, quite significant uh, uh, ecosystem, uh, but it's not any specific to any individual geographical location. This is a generalized uh, average uh, through different uh, ecosystems. So in, in ideation, you have a, a certain number of potential ideas that never ever come into a company. In concepting phase, you narrow down, those down, you kind of throw some of those ideas don't even carry far, further enough. And you also start to see the number of people in any given kind of, this is like an annual cycle, like every year there would be this much. And also the funnel of how many you need to have to get to a certain number of, of, of success. On the commitment phase, this funnel gets shrinked down quite significantly. There's separately then uh, like SMEs or small businesses that can come out of those, but this is narrowing down to real startup co-founding teams with investment potential. Again, doesn't need to mean that they have to have investors or take investment, but they are shaped that way. Um, and then through validation, a significant cut again in the numbers. And then on scaling, again, a significant cut. And then on establishing, again, a significant cut. And it doesn't mean all of the companies in between would disappear or fail. They can also just plateau to that level uh, and become more iteratively growing companies. But this gives perspective into the types of numbers. So you can Divide all the numbers by 17 if you want to see what that means in, in, a, in an individual successful company. But this is a statistical perspective just to give um, more view to the matter. So these numbers are much more relevant for the support organizations than for individual entrepreneurs, but it's also more important for investors specific to new angel investors, those who work in the support functions. So, when we look at through the lens of a startup development phases framework, we have these two different aspects to focus on and develop both of them in a balanced manner. So, from an idea to business and from team to organization. And in the individual modules, we go through both of these aspects together in each of the key development phase, at formation phase, validation phase, and growth phase. And when we look at the supporting um, factors or key factors, the money and connections, so the, the professional investors value becomes much higher in the beginning. In, uh, in the later states, in the beginning, it's more about general knowledge, uh, advisory perspective, uh, business angels are there kind of in between bridging this. And also in any ecosystem, maturity of these activities and support functions are provided by public services, non-profit organizations, and these types of structures. And then the private side is much more when the validation is found and it's more about scaling. That's when it also naturally evolves um, more private side actors. And naturally there is a kind of linear uh, transition between these support services. Some private companies go much deeper earlier. Some public services, depending on the ecosystem, extend much further uh, longer. And usually the reason is that if there's no private sector activities or actors enough, then private public sector tries to accommodate. And when there's more private actors available, then the, the public sector tries to kind of give room uh, to those uh, private actors. So in each of these stages, um, we look at this now from the perspective of investor and investor in reality here means anyone investing money, resources, their time, money, you know, advertising space, uh, co-founder, anyone who puts something to the table. 
and not only someone putting money, so any return of investment, so that whatever you put there that's worth money, it's a resource, but you are anyway looking more of the upside, so not only, you know, charity, so just giving it, so this doesn't include that kind of perspective, so everyone anyway have some expectation uh, for the success. So at the very early ideation phase, uh, it's about coming up with the potential scalable product and some business model, how we could make money, but it's just theories, it's just uh, models to help understand the concept. Usually it's only one person or a very vague team. So it means that there is no validation, there is no shareholder agreement, there is no document to say that we are a team and these are our responsibilities, our roles, this is my equity position. So basically none of these are yet structured. And it also may be missing that there's you know two developers and they feel we would really like to get a designer and a business, business person here. Uh, so it's not balanced in the, in the skills to be able to, to execute the product or service at all, all key levels. So the investors view here at this point that it's, it's just a dream, it's pie in the sky, uh, a lot of work to get involved and uh, it really depends on the more experienced the investor is, the usually less involvement they want to have. So they still may be happy to help, they may be happy to give some you know, perspectives, ideas, but they really don't necessarily want to get involved. And the reason being because they know how much time is required, regardless of the money, they also know how much money can be lost and the likelihood of return of investment is quite low. But the, the, the more it's about new entrepreneurs, the more it's about, you know, they're on their first journey, second journey, or those who can contribute part-time or the first-time investors and so forth. But definitely, at the same time, it means that the volume here is quite high because it doesn't really mean a serious commitment. So a lot of these things can be done and be part of. But the valuation at this point is zero. So there is no value because there's nothing has been validated. And in reality, nothing exists yet. At concepting phase, now we are kind of structuring some of the you know, milestones, we're structuring some of the activities that need to happen in between each of those milestones. Uh, usually there is a, some kind of team behind starting to formalize that take on more responsibility of pushing this forward. And, uh, and, and it starts to kind of shape up. So it looks something like this. So the idea is still vague. This is kind of where the value are evaluated based from. So the idea, okay, it's a nice idea, but what an investor would look like, they look at the team and they look at the market. Is this market growing? Is it uh, big enough? Is this team interesting? Do they have relevant background? Do they have relevant passion and motivation to attack that market? and the value of idea is still quite low. So it's starting to get interesting because it's anyway further along than the previous one, still very risky, and yes, the money doesn't really help the venture to grow. And this is different where entrepreneurs feel the money would help us to do more of this. It's just lowering the personal risk and making it more comfortable to do and invest but it doesn't make the company any better by having the money. It will have more resources from founders, but the founders are expected to stay with the company, whether there's money or not. It's kind of like uh, your child. So when you have a child, you take care of them, regardless of your personal situation or monetary capabilities, you will take care of it. Maybe you can't take care of it as well as you would like, but you will take care of it. 
So at this phase, the valuation already can be something. And this, I said, the valuation doesn't really mean anything, but it's a number that you can negotiate. And the reason there needs to be a valuation is now if we think that someone would take a role, then if the value is zero, then anyone giving anything would get 100%. And it can't be the model. So therefore, a, a model to calculate uh, something uh, of value of the potential is useful. And if there is no valuation, it can't be used. And on, one, on the other hand, if ownership is already shared and someone is giving something in return, then basically you can have already a way to calculate what is the value through that means. It's not the same valuation as what investors would see. That's the valuation uh, if they invest money, those in the shark tank. But it is a valuation nevertheless that some resources are already captured to be available to build this venture. But again, it's valuation for the calculation purposes, valuation not for investment purposes. So the commitment phase at zero point, and this is why it's zero, because this is where things get more serious, is that before this, everything is just discussion, talk, theories, you know, uh, initial plans, initial promises of contribution, initial so forth. But at the point zero, the whole thing comes down to documenting this. So to commit it and skill balanced core founding team. So it's basically creating a shareholder agreement involving all of the shareholders and writing down what are the IPRs that the company has what are the IPRs that each of the founders contribute or how do they consider the IPRs. And basically also uh, by being able to com commit resources uh, to develop the product or service without being dependent on uncommitted external resources. So the target would be here that if it's a building a digital service, that there's resources to design it, to code it, and to sell it. So that would be a good uh, balanced skill set and also committed skill set that regardless of finding funding, you could already create this product. So if you can't have this, then you, you can't prove that you can continue the progress. So that's why it's a validation for the commitment, validation that you are both committed to doing this and you have the resources to do it, at least at the very minimum level. So now, if we look at where the value is, now a significant portion of that value actually becomes communicating about the capturing the value in the, in the founding team and the talent. The more divided skills there is, the more skillful they are, the more ambitious they are, the more committed they are, the better attitude they are, the more valuable the team is. The market is still important and the value of idea has grown a little bit compared to the, the previous how, how and where there was the value to be seen. So again, investors' perspective, if they see this first time and not know the past, they may still consider, well, it's still something vague. And oftentimes founders fail to communicate what they have achieved so far, specifically from the team perspective, because usually the conversations are all about the product again. But if they would communicate, we have gone through building this team, we have, we have a shareholder agreement, we have this type of commitment from these people and so forth. It's important because if you understand where the value that they are looking at is, it's worth communicating that. But at this point, uh, um, you may start to look at the, hey, if you know the past specifically, you can, if you know the progress, it looks much more appealing. And this is a point where you may want to consider joining as an advisor, even if you're an investor. Again, the, the valuation numbers here, they get 
this valuation, if this is in, you know, in, in Germany, or if this is in Silicon Valley, or if, if this is in Austin, Texas, or if this is in, in, uh, in let's say, Barcelona, if this is in Helsinki, if this is in Singapore, these numbers can also be very different, uh, depending on the financing and the, the, the other funding sources available there. But anyway, the point here is to communicate how much is now three to five times more valuable or the valuation is higher than just the previous step. And again, this doesn't mean that you can get this type of valuation through an investor that would actually invest money, but you can get this type of invest, uh, valuation through from advisor deals and that types for sure. Or if you can, then, then there's something else is off. Market is not interesting. The product is not clear enough, or the product concept is not clear enough, and so forth. It can also be much higher. In a case of serial entrepreneurs coming from Supercell, uh, you know, starting a, a new gaming company, they would get much higher valuation just by their commitment that we are looking to build a new company. So many things matter. So the validation phase. Now this is already that there is already a product or a service that is being iterated and the validation is being looked at, at least an MVP. And or they continue to attract external resources. So people who work for equity, maybe some grants, maybe some public funding, Maybe they win some competitions, uh, but they are clearly now executing with the resources that they've got committed and tied into shareholder agreement and showing some progress. <clears throat> so now the value starts to grow more on the product side, and there's a new whole new dimension here, which is the customers. Now there's something that can be measured through customers because the product starts to form, starts to exist. So now the value starts to grow into the customers. So while the market is the market potential, market share, other actors, the customers are dedicated to your customers, your company, your revenue source. So if we look at investors, here's the, you know, the point where they hit or miss. And this is the time, you know, when, you know, Uber was in the beginning and there are those investors who said, well, you know, that will never work. And it was too early for them and they figured that, well, we'll get in later. And, uh, and um, this is the moment where, you know, the time window here can be as short as, you know, one month, three months, or it can be as long as three years. Like there is no saying how long a company can actually stay in this phase. Um, but the key point here is that you don't get unlimited opportunity to invest as an investor. As a founder, you go once to one investor, maybe you'll go maximum twice. And if they say no, and you say no, you just most likely go to other ones. And again, it's not about the investors, uh, but that's just one of the validation tools at this point. It's always good to talk to investors. It's even better to get a deal from investors. You still can say no to the deal when it's on your table, because the process itself is very valuable, regardless of whether the funding comes or doesn't come, or whether you choose to take it or whether you choose to look at it later. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's you have to take all the things into consideration at that time. Valuation, now again, I, I would like to highlight not just the number itself, but how much the number has grown from the previous phase. So this is how you build up the valuation, and these are things, things that are kind of very invisible, um, but it's important to learn to communicate what you have done and how to value has increased and communicate it from the right points. So in between phases one and two, this is the, the tricky time. This is the hit and miss phase. 
It's where assumptions get validated, if selected market or team is good, uh, solutions and business models can be can be still changed, pivoted, sometimes even whole business idea, and in some cases even the whole market is changed. But again, what is key that oftentimes the team is not. So in many cases of successful pivots, it was the exact same team that did it. The founders of YouTube, they started YouTube as a dating site. You know, the, the founders of Twitter, they started as a podcasting platform or something like that. But it was the same team executing and based on their learnings, they found out something better. Or they didn't even find out, they just wanted to try something totally different. So again, the value of the team and, uh, and how that matters. So the scaling, now it's not only about the business model working, it's not only about having customers, it's not only about you know, profitability levels, it's about ability, it's about the trajectory. It's how it looks like, what is the growth? If it's a 10% growth month on month, which is, I think, in Fly Combinator Accelerator, they try to get 10% growth week by week. So every week, 10% more. So if you can keep that kind of growth, you can have significant growth. So when they talk about growth, they take it very seriously. The, the level of growth they are trying to get is a key. So when it comes high valuations in the very early stage of the growth, it's all about the, 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 the market, the trajectory, and what is the expected, what is the growth rate at the moment, and how long that can be expected to continue. So the iPhone, the Apple stock is starting to, to dive, not, not drastically, but has lost a significant amount of value when they came up with the, uh, the communication that they no longer uh, talk about the growth of iPhone sales because they're not going to, by default, they're not going to anymore sell more units. They're just going to sell at higher price. And with, of course, they have huge profitability on all the things that the iPhone enable for them, like 30% of all of the income from their app stores and so forth. But the key thing is that the growth curve and how well that can be sustained and for how long, or if that can be even accelerated, then that's the key factor for investors, how they look at it. So now, <clears throat> basically, the customer's part has been pretty, it has developed balanced matter, certain value, Appreciation has been in the product, very little, then in the market, very little, then in the team, more. It has grown, the product has grown, the market has grown, the customers have now grown. And now the next level is the organization. It's a new thing, and the organization is the scaling machine. So you need an organization, you need a structure to manage the growth. And it's not only about scalable business model, have to have a scalable model to continue grow your resources and manage those resources to be able to cater for the customers and the growing demand. So it becomes how do you scale the organization? So that's the new part of where the value starts to accumulate. How effective is the organization? Not only the team, the core team, and so forth. And at this point, it's either awesome for investors who got in at the early phase because they will have rights to invest in the later phase. They have first right to invest in the future round, so they are always in, so to speak, if they negotiated their terms right, or if they missed the boat. So now, if they missed the boat, it's not only that they missed that opportunity to invest early, they also missed the opportunity to invest in the future. Because as long as the investors who are already on board keep investing, uh, what the amount of money that is needed, the new investors have no buy-in, 
or they have to pay significantly higher valuation. And this is basically how the, the market works from the investor's perspective. Again, the context of investors are used here to give pers better perspective on how the value of the company grows and how it's perceived from outside. Because us as entrepreneurs out of our own companies, we of course think the company is always much more than what the other ones think from the outside. So now, here the valuations are, can be even to 100 million, it depends totally on the market and the team and so forth. But again, the point here to communicate is not about the value, it's about um, the increased uh, growth from the previous states. And establishing, now this is either that the company continues in the growth path, or it has certain reached certain level and it becomes more iterative growth. But the key here, it has become a machine, a normal organization that can attract necessary funding and resources. You know, get funding, hire people, work on producing uh, to continue to grow. And then it's an optional whether founders make an exit or continue with the company. In some cases, investors can make an exit and the founders continue, or it can be that everyone just continues as long as they see the, the, the progress. <clears throat> Again, valuation development and uh, perspective into this matter. So now the customer's part continues to grow because that's where the money comes from. Of course, they can be indirect customers, so customers in Facebook case would be the advertisers there. Uh, the value of organizations start to grow. The market is there, the product is there, but the product also is one piece because there can now be a second product, a third product, a service, additional revenue sources. But really the key then how the company continues to develop is that these things continue to align and be more balanced as a bigger organization. So now we are starting to see how the, the great company starts to formalize. Having all, no dependency on any individual thing, having all the assets uh, embedded into it existing, being able to con continuously deliver that value, capture that value to resource its uh, needs of growth or operations. So, as a summary, when it comes to the valuation, your company development, um, communicate clearly. So, define your key communication target group, so the key stakeholders, your own team members, extended team members, the advisors, the investors, the customers. Define the levels and the patterns, how often. And in what format do you communicate to all of these key groups? Make sure to communicate your vision, target, plan to reach the target, and continue communicating about your progress. And all of these things are most important thing uh, for your credibility and the ability to attract further resources. The more systematically and periodically and you communicate to all key stakeholders, the more they will appreciate you as a company they are associated with or involved with. Too many entrepreneurs stop communicating to their key stakeholders other than customers perhaps. Always keep your potential investors, future investors, existing investors, advisors and mentors up to date of your development because their ability to support and help you or to communicate about the activities of your company to their peers or friends or channels is totally dependent on how often do you give them reason to communicate and talk about your company. So learn to start this kind of communication pattern early on. So I want to highlight that while there's a lot of knowledge and content in here, there is no such thing as guaranteed success. 
There is no one truth, there is no one wisdom. This is just packaged information uh, of knowledge that can be utilized and consumed and revisited. And there's much more detail in the future uh, modules coming, diving much deeper into these specific phases and what to do inside that different phase. Uh, there is no one that can say, no matter what experience they have, nobody can say that will succeed, that will fail. Again, there's only likelihood of success, likelihood of failure. And that varies depending on who you ask and what background information do they have. But the further the, your journey has been, and the more you have documented process and systematic communication, the more credibility you will build up towards your future resource needs, whether those are people, finance, channels, customers, about your ability to execute. So the better you estimate your targets, the better you deliver on your plans, the more credibility you are, and the more new plans you present, the more people will believe in the success of the company. And that's a key thing. If you don't communicate, if you don't create this pattern, how would they justify getting involved? You don't want to give them a snapshot. You want to have them watching the movie and the story evolve and seeing what the story will develop into. If you only saw one photograph every now and then, they don't necessarily understand the context. Also, regardless of how experienced someone is, they also can't guarantee that they can repeat the success. Because that's the whole point of innovation, is trying to create new value that wasn't created before, and finding new markets for that value, and also how it's been delivered. So there is no magic, there is no one way, but there are certain ways that you can reduce the likelihood of failure. So the things are really based on vision, clear vision, clear mission, strategy, attitude, commitment, skills and learnings, tools and methods, determination and execution and experience, all combined and all the things that you need to build for the company over time, not in day one. And it can be done and it is all the time done. So all the time new companies are finding this and making it work and it is being done and it's been done in high volumes. But the key things is that it is like uh, sports, you know, becoming an Olympic athlete or even as simple as staying fit. Even if you know all the things that you should be doing, what matters is that you keep doing them. So if you know what needs to be done, then do at least those things that need to be done. It will increase the likelihood of success. And no one would imagine someone for somehow magically becoming, you know, an Olympic winner in swimming of 400 meters of freestyle or whatever. Everyone knows what it takes to get to that level. Business is no different. Sure, there can be magical things happening randomly, but that cannot be done by design. If you're trying to do things by design, then there is models to. If you're only thinking that it's going to be luck, and somehow those who are successful, they are just lucky, well, there's certain truth to that. Those who are more active are more lucky. So even to win a lottery, you can increase the chance by buying tons of lottery tickets. And by, for a fact, you will never win a lottery if you buy no tickets ever. But that doesn't mean lottery is a smart thing to do. It's just an example. The likelihood is totally against you, so not a good idea. So, to simplify this into a formula, <clears throat> so you need an idea, you need a timing, you need a plan, time's execution. So 
So the key is that even if you have idea, if you have good timing, if you have plan, but if you have no execution, none of those matter. So the execution part is the team. And that's why it's not a plus, it's a multiplier. So if execution is zero, none of those matter. And if we break that into more detail, so the plan is actually a set of initial assumptions times execution, and the execution is volume and speed times validating assumptions. So the speed is a key in the execution and removing the failures. So you come up with initial sets, then you add more speed and you add more validated learning based new assumptions. So when you learn something, you remove the failures through the learning, you come up with new assumptions and you continue to execute. So the plan and execution opened up here. And uh, finally, <clears throat> some of the references that were mentioned in this document, here are links to the varieties of innovation, ways of becoming ex entrepreneur, six myths of entrepreneurship, and some other tools. And specifically um, for the ideation phase, I really encourage to look into Tony Ulwick uh, and his YouTube videos and his material, because this was one of the last missing pieces I found, because the whole startup world couldn't answer how to systematically in the idea, how to systematically to do ideation. And Tony Ulwick has been doing his thing more process and system oriented way of ideation uh, longer than I have done this. So I think more than 25 years. So it's really, really good stuff. And he has not done it in the startup context and that's why it's not so well known. And uh, yeah, I, I recommend everyone to use any of the keywords in the presentation for YouTube for more detail. Uh, also, uh, slide share for presentation, uh, combination, because those are very effective ways. And then uh, reading material, um, uh, more written context and white papers on, the, on any of the topics on, on the broader internet. But YouTube is a very powerful tool when you know what you're looking for. And uh, in the coming modules, we're going to be focusing more and more into uh, specific things that are relevant on each of the key development phases. So this has been the end of module one and has been the overview to the startup journey and uh, maturity of the key elements that are relevant in the startup in the, in the various perspectives. And uh, hopefully this gives an idea uh, of what the other modules will be involved because this now painted the picture of the whole journey and, uh, and will keep going deeper into the other levels. So thank you.